Now I bet you degenerates won't mind losing to your opponent like this, no matter the punishment of the upperclassmen monitoring the duel, especially if you swap the mechs out for- what is going on guys, MJ2005 Gundam here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the high grade Darobald from Gundam, The Witch from Mercury. Serving as the proof of concept for the 5th generation Jetark mobile suits, it utilizes next gen drone technology, as well as a half-witted AI to stand toe to toe with the gun bits of the aerial. 5 runners, a sprue space, 2 wires, and a somewhat sizable sticker sheet make up this kit's modest parts count, and despite it being a Jetark mobile suit, the mold is completely unique to the Darobald. Despite that, it shares some construction concepts with the Dilanza, with limb parts being made up of halves held together by joints as well as a very familiar chest construction. On top of that, the kit comes in a matte finish from the factory, but since it has no undergates, cleaning the nubs up, as good as the gate placement was, would damage the easily replaceable finish. Mechanically, it shares the G-Wish construction of universally compatible head, arms, and backpack, as well as cross-compatible legs between the kits in the same line. Overall, it's a quick and beginner-friendly build that makes for a fun pick-up-and-play experience. About an hour of building later, you'll end up with an attractive bald guy named Daryl. Except he isn't bald. Well, even without the stickers applied, the Daryl ball looks great and can arguably be displayed as is. Every essential color detail is present and the all-yellow visor isn't much of an eyesore. But one thing that immediately jumps out at me is the translucence of the shell units, as the clear black pieces are too transparent to go without stickers. However, it's because of their translucence that the activated shell unit stickers on the shoulders, chest and thighs are able to really shine through when the light catches them, showing just as well as the bare stickers on the shoulder shields as well as the gold and green on the visor, which looks beautiful. There are also solid black ones for the inactive shell units, but I just enjoy having the extra green accents. Besides the minimal sticker use, the kit manages to capture the aesthetics of its on-screen counterpart and represent it well. While the extra matte finish on the plastic avoids a cheap toy-like final product, and channels are used to fill in any potential scene lines while providing some extra detail, which I highly recommend bringing out as the bright red washes them out which dulls the overall looks. Bringing out the detail as well as filling in the recesses with black can easily spruce the kit up. Besides that, the Darabald is an astounding looking high grade. Articulation starts with an unrestricted double ball jointed head which is easier to grip than the pancake that is the Dilanza's head. The shoulder sockets are ball jointed for moving along all axes, while the arms are also ball jointed. The shoulder armor can shift up independently, allowing the arms to move out very far, on top of the rotating shields that can also pivot up and down, as well as forward and back. There's a bicep swivel, double jointed elbows, and ball jointed wrists. Torso and ab crunches are impressive, while there is a full waist rotation. Front skirts are ball jointed, while the back skirt is unfortunately stuck. Decent front, back, and sideways kicks are achievable. There's a thigh swivel, double jointed knees, and hinged ball jointed ankles, which have dedicated side tilts for footing adjustment. Finally, the toes and heels can flip down. Altogether, the articulation and handling of the Darobald is exceptional, and with less bulk than the Dilanza, the range of movement is naturally increased. Full adjustability of the shoulder shields is also a massive help. In terms of accessories, the Darobald is rather loaded. It starts you off with a pair of holding hands and the left open hand, which is massively appreciated. Its only handheld weapon comes in the form of the beam javelin coming with two unique beam effects for both ends, it sandwiches into the hands for use in performing long-reach melee attacks, or for yeeting it at the opponent. However, just as usual, circle handle in square hole equals a less than satisfactory grip. The javelin can also split into the larger beam anchor and smaller beam kunai for dual wielding purposes, which does help with the weight issues, massively so. If a further reach is needed, the main and backpack forearms can be used as the Ishvara attack drones, the main arms being the A-type, while the backpack ones usable with the included purple SB-13 beams being the B-type, which can replace the main arms in case they're destroyed. And thanks to their 3mm holes, they can be easily displayed separately from the body, provided that you have enough stands of course. 
To make up for the lost dexterity, the feet can launch off as the shackle claws by flipping the toes and heels down, and launch off via a wire that plugs into the original ball joints and a special adapter for the disembodied foot. Thankfully, an action base is provided for the Dara Ball for such an occasion, and the kit comes with two wires to launch both feet out. Which is kinda neat, except you need separate action bases to actually keep them in the air. Finally, the Ambika shield units can also come off for all ranged defense, and on top of needing your own action bases, you'll need to have the pipe shape adapter to actually plug the shields onto the bases to begin with. You're gonna need a lot of action bases to make the most out of this kit, I can tell you that much. Personally, I couldn't echo the sentiment that the Jetark House kits are more enjoyable than the Gundams. Well, that is until this guy came in. The high-grade Darabalt is, no joke, one of the most fun G-Wish kits so far, despite its flaws. The main one being the grip around the Javelin, if not the heavy investment in action bases, or the ways for the G-Wish display base to make the most out of the drone gimmick. The kit itself looks mean. The use of a matte finish, seamline channels, and awfully easy construction makes it one of the best looking beginner friendly kits. The crazy gimmicks are inconspicuously hidden for those who don't want to indulge in them, and for those that do want to express their exuberance, they're easy to set up and execute. All in all, the high grade Darabalt has something for everyone except a gun, and is easily one of the strongest high grade G Witch releases thus far. And that's all for me. Thank you for watching, drop a like and comment if you did enjoy the video, subscribe for more content like this, and feel free to follow me on social media with the links down below. That said, take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out guys, bye bye